Okay, I want to bring you up to date. I am in communication, a lot of it, with Liz Gunn. Now, she seems reluctant to ring in, but boy, have I got texts up the wazoo from her. So I'm going to read what she sent me without comment, and I invite her to ring in at any time, and I know she's listening, and then I might comment about what she said. And I want you to listen to this. This is as if it's Liz Gunn speaking. Could you read this in full on air as a show of your bona fides if that is what the tone of your text to me is seeking to convey? Liz. Sean, over the past two years I have heard of your incessant cant that I am mad and certifiable as facile dismissals of a woman of stamina, courage, intelligence and above all a deep abiding love for the New Zealand in which I grew up and which is now becoming so lost to a covertly set up fascism. I had to face down a fascist, thuggish brute on Saturday night at the airport. A man of bulging steroidal biceps in a too small shirt with a tiny neck and possibly similar intellectual capacity. He was clothed in the newly adopted fear and force uniform of a police I no longer recognise, respect or even understand. It was deeply traumatising, as it has been for all the other brave and innocent Kiwis uh, physically abused by police during Cindy's pervidious reign of terror. Think Freedom Village, that river of heroes, a year ago. Why would I today expose myself to yet more abuse, albeit the verbal, loud and bombastic type from you? If you wonder at my reply, here are two remords. Words to remind you why you carry this dark cloud before you, Sean. Brenton Faithful. He was a good and ethical and deeply brave Kiwi who trusted you to give him the safety and respect of an open platform to let him present his well-founded and observed evidence and then all you did was shout him down. That interview with Brenton is a verbal metaphor for the 15 seconds it took that police thug to begin battering me. He gave me, oh, it's emotional. He gave me zero chance to speak. He charged in behind me, chest puffed out, tall, dead-eyed, robotic, soulless. How could you read all that if he was behind you and you couldn't see him? Um, his rapid-fire abuses included several attempts uh, to break my thumb by wrenching it back, actually fracturing my wrist, I don't like that, causing twisted tensions in the tendons and fascia through my elbow up to my neck. And all I had asked him was one brief and important question for all Kiwis to ask when faced with police bullying and overreach. Under what legislation are you purporting to do this? It's called the laws of trespass. Uh, when he charged at me, his guttural command was yelling us to get out of the airport for simply filming friends arriving. The airport people had not verbally trespassed us. We had had zero discussion. It was as if we were in some communist Chinese camp to be ordered around and totally dehumanised for holding a camera. We make no regular income and are not a commercial enterprise. We do this mahi, that's Maori for work, from love and are both volunteers for a crucial service to tell the myriad truths that are hit, being hidden by government and our shameful MSM. I am 63, weighed less than half the Hulk size, offered no resistance and within 15 seconds he had my arm sharply and very roughly high twisted behind my back was pulling at my thumb while contorting my hand at the wrist and kicking me under my body. As I screamed, stop it, you're hurting me, he grunted with animalistic satisfaction and said good. There is much else I could tell you if you, I could trust you, Sean, to not denigrate me and to bombast your mercurial way. But this last bit will do it for now. Once he had viciously cuffed my hurt wrist for no reason, except intimidation and dominance. I had offered no resistance. I repeated my question. I was at all times in lawyer mode, seeking answers and exploring my rights calmly and cogently. I said twice, could you please tell me under what piece of legislation you are doing this? And the second time he snarled, I don't have to tell you that. Since when, sir, I replied, since forever came the lamentably unintelligent and untrue reply. 
The saddest part of that, that we have someone in frontline police of such excess bulk, yet with such total death of mor- death of morality, humanity, compassion, decency. Oh, could someone get me a drink? I'm running out. Or even the mental firepower to understand the laws with under which he is meant to be operating. How can our police have sunk to such desperate low standards of recruitment? This alone reflects on the manifest ineptitude of Andrew Costa, of whom many thousands of Kiwis now speak with total derision and disrespect, and through whose endless lies most of us now see clearly. Sean, just a breather. Pretty big story. It's a mini-series in this. Sean, our police are vastly abusing their powers. I have many stories of their abuses and can now personally testify to their violence and arrogance and lack of depth of understanding of the laws that they're meant to ho- that are meant to hold them in check. Are not those the very qualities, the hallmarks of creeping and sinister fascism? Saturday was my turn. Boy, she is martyr. This is definitely martyr call. Next week, it could be any one of your listeners. Unless we stand together and say enough to state and police lies and overreach, we will lose the New Zealand we love to a sad little Pacifica version of the horrors of China. My case is a wake-up call to those Kiwis who looked away from Cindy's brutalities. It was never about health. It has always been about the slow march of state control over our once free lives. Um... Done. My story is there. It is a magnus opus. I am testing your own good faith. Trust is something earned, Sean. I have no trust in your holding a space that does other than denigrate. Let us see if you honour this piece I have written. Some parts of this will be in my affidavit. Well, good on you. Oh, that's quite emotional. I need a cuppa and a lie down after that, Reid. Well, here's the questions you didn't answer in that. Did you seek permission? And I'm just going to set aside all your crazy emotionalism and your judgmental statements and assumptions about the police offer and what what you didn't tell and all of that rave, uh, Liz, you didn't tell me whether or not you'd ask for permission, why you were filming this family, and if it was for a broadcast through other medium. Because then you need to ask permission. You didn't tell me if the police said, if you knew when you went there that you were filming without permission. And none of those questions, which are all totally relevant to the way the police um, enacted... You just have glossed over because it sounds to me like, gosh, it sounds like it was like the martyrdom of Christ, really. The stations of the cross, Liz. And I guess it'll all be out in court in your affidavit. Um, it would have been much easier if you'd come on, maybe it wouldn't, if you'd come on and read that out. Um, Brenton Faithful was a liar and he was misleading my audience and misleading me because he said, oh, otherwise perfectly healthy person suddenly drops dead. Fails to mention the guy was 87 and the average age of the people that he was uh, saying had died suddenly was 82. So honestly, Liz, come on, come in. I I know you're upset. Look, Liz, in some ways I say maybe I am being a bit mean and you seriously do need some help. But I'm not buying, I'm not buying the emotive claptrap that you just, uh, you just sent to me and I did do you the respect of reading it out, but you didn't answer any of the relevant questions that a real journalist would have asked about what actually happened on Saturday night. I guess that will all come out in court and you will sit there in sacked cloth and ashes telling the gullible that you're fighting for their freedom from a communist Chinese regime. There is, Liz, plenty wrong with this country, plenty that causes me disquiet in this country and plenty that I rail against in this country. Some of it we would agree on. But your level of extreme martyrdom on this and your hyperbole and your lack of journalistic integrity when you say two kids uh, collapsed in a rangy or a chemist shop when they didn't, when you believe a shyster like Brenton Faithful, you know, it just goes to credibility. But anyway, you're going to have your day in court. That's cool. You're famous now. And as I suspected, you're making yourself a martyr. Easter's coming up. That'll be comfortable for you.